Listen only mode. Hello and welcome to this webinar presentation of seasonal allergies. My name is Lori Benison and I am a worksite wellness consultant for Loveless Health Plan. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping rules. Um, everyone's going to be in listen-only mode. If you have any questions or you would like a copy of this presentation, you can email us at healthysteps at loveless.com. Some of you may notice a delay in the slides or scratchiness or static on the line. This is likely due to changing weather patterns and typically resolves itself quickly. If you do get disconnected, though, don't panic. Simply just call back in. This presentation is going to last approximately 15 minutes. After the presentation ends, you'll receive an evaluation survey. Your feedback is important to us, so please take time to complete. We use this information to make improvements to our programs. So let's talk about what we'll learn. All across the country, people with allergies are sniffling, sneezing, coughing and wheezing, and generally suffering with runny noses and itchy eyes. These are just some of the symptoms that at least one out of every five Americans faces each year as the pollen from trees, grass, flowers, and plants makes its way into the air. Avoiding contact with allergens like pollen is the tried and true advice that allergists give to patients. If something irritates you, avoid it. That's the motto that allergy sufferers must adopt. By tuning into your allergy triggers, you can rein in your reactions. There's lots of allergy treatment options. Today we're going to talk about what causes allergies, the symptoms they cause, some traditional treatments, some natural treatments, and some lifestyle tips. So many factors contribute to allergies. Most are caused by environmental factors such as pollen, dust, mold, pet dander, smoke, and pollution. Other people are allergic to foods and medications, which may cause more severe reactions than environmental allergens. So again, some of the symptoms include things like sniffling, sneezing, coughing and wheezing, runny nose, and itchy eyes. So these are the same symptoms for a cold. So how can you tell the difference? Uh, you can't really outside of the fact that a cold will usually last two weeks or less while seasonal allergies last until the allergen that you're reacting to is gone or you're no longer exposed to it. If you think you may have allergies or aren't sure, you should see your healthcare provider. They can determine whether your symptoms are caused by a virus such as the common cold or by allergies. They can also recommend medications or give you a prescription if you do have allergies. Some common allergy medications are Benadryl, Zyrtec, Allegra, and Claritin. They're all available over the counter and in generic forms. For people with more severe reactions or do not respond to these medications, a visit to an allergist may be necessary. Allergists will conduct tests to determine the exact causes of the allergies and may prescribe allergy shots to help alleviate the symptoms. So as I said, for many, relief is just a drugstore counter away um, with a wide array of traditional medications available to help. However, for an increasing number of allergy sufferers, the road to relief is best paid by Mother Nature. With a variety of all natural treatments that studies show can help, often without many of the troubling side effects ascribed to traditional care. Using nature-based products can be a very useful way to handle mild allergies and a useful adjunct for more significant allergies. And there are many types of treatments that you can safely try. When you understand what's happening during allergy attacks, treatment, treating them naturally seems like plain common sense. First, picture a grain of pollen. It looks something like a spiny sea urchin. Now imagine this prickly invader entering your nasal passages and latching onto soft mucous membranes. These mucous membranes line our bronchial and nasal passages and contain immune cells called mast cells, which are loaded with histamines. Receptors sit on top of these mast cells, and when an allergen trigger, such as pollen, mold, or pet dander, lands on top of the receptor, it alerts the mast cells, which respond by releasing histamine and other chemicals. 
The histamine initiates a series of reactions designed to help the body get rid of the intruder, including sneezing, watering eyes, and itching. For some people, particularly those with asthma, this reaction may also include swelling in the bronchial tubes that makes it difficult to breathe. Most allergy medications attempt to treat the symptoms your body instigates to get rid of the allergen, but don't it, doesn't it make more sense to shore up your defenses before your body goes into attack mode? Many of the natural remedies discussed here are designed to prevent a reaction before it occurs. Here are more things that you can do to help head off allergies before they start, as well as some drug-free ways to treat symptoms when they do arise. Among those generating the loudest buzz right now is the European herb butter, which has had some very impressive clinical trial results. Um, Freeze-dried nettles and a tonic made from the herb golden seal are also recommended. In addition to herbs, many naturopathic doctors also believe certain nutrients can be helpful in quieting seasonal symptoms. Among the most popular are grapeseed extract and a flavonoid compound. Although, although both occur naturally in many foods and are especially abundant in red wine, when used in supplement form, they can be extremely helpful in reducing allergy symptoms, particularly in conjunction with vitamin C. Research, researchers have found that um, about 500 milligrams of vitamin C a day can ease all allergy symptoms. I'm sorry, not all allergy symptoms, just allergy symptoms. One more natural treatment that is recommended is a saline salt water nasal spray. The saline works to wash out the pollen or reduce and thin the mucus. In addition to whatever natural treatments you try on your own, you may also find significant relief visiting a practitioner of the ancient Chinese medical practice known as acupuncture. Based on the idea that stimulating points outside the body can change or initiate reactions inside, in this case, treatment is thought to affect the immune system where aller um, allergic reactions begin. In a small but significant study of 26 hay fever patients published in the American Journal of Chinese Medicine, acupuncture reduced symptoms in all 26 without side effects. A study of some 72 people totally eliminated symptoms in more than half, which is two treatments. Acupuncture can be particularly helpful if you are suffering from multiple allergies since it works to quiet the areas of the immune system that are overstimulated by exposure to multiple irritating factors. So turning the focus to the kitchen cabinet, you might also want to try cooking up some allergy relief in the form of hot spicy foods. The reason is that experts say the spicier the dish, the more likely it is to thin mucus secretions, which in turn can clear nasal passages. Among the most frequently recommended spices for this purpose include cayenne pepper, hot ginger, ginger as well as traditional onion and garlic, and of course here in Albuquerque, red and green chili. Favor foods high in antioxidants like fruits and vegetables, omega-3 fatty acids like fish and nuts, and other nutrients that our um, experts say may help ease inflammation and minimize complications of hay fever. Clear soups can help thin mucus and clear nasal passages as well. Some studies suggest that the probiotic often added to yogurt or milk may also help to ease allergy symptoms. And as we said before, vitamin C can help minimize the spring allergy symptoms as well. Um, interestingly, what you don't eat may even be more important than what you do eat. Um, the reason is that food intolerance may be far more intimately entwined with seasonal allergies than we realize. So you really have to take a look at your diet and cut out any foods that seem to provoke even mild sensitivity, such as occasional hives or even upset stomach. In doing so, you can literally lighten the burden on your immune system, which in turn may help reduce the impact of seasonal allergy um, reactions. So a few minor lifestyle changes can also go a long way toward keeping symptoms under control. Avoid using window fans to cool rooms because they can pull pollen indoors. Um, keep windows closed when driving using the air conditioner if necessary to avoid allergens. And limit your time outdoors when ragweed pollen counts are highest from mid-August until first frost. If your seasonal allergies are causing you to spend more time indoors than out, you may be tempted to try an air filtration system, which many say can remove irritating dust and pollens from your personal space and in the process improve seasonal allergies. 
but according to a recent report from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, while these sometimes costly units may clear the air, once an allergy is in progress, they won't stop it or have any impact on the symptoms. What may work better, however, is whenever you go outside during allergy season is to um, don a paper dust filter, a little mask that you wear over your mouth and nose. So though many non-traditional treatments can be extremely helpful, remember that natural doesn't always mean better or even safer. It's possible to overdose on even the most seemingly mild preparations, and it's important to remember that almost anything in nature's pharmacy could cause a toxic reaction if you use too much. More important is to never mix alternative treatments with traditional drugs without your doctor's approval. So if, for example, you're taking the allergy drug Allegra, an antihistamine, at the same time you decide to try a natural substance with antihistaminic properties, you can end up with far too much antihistaminic activity, which can result in some significant problems. So if your allergies are moderate to severe, you, shouldn't, you should not uh, self-treat even seemingly benign natural products without checking your allergist first. So, um, when you're ready to try some alternative care, one key to success is to start treatment before the allergy symptoms kick in. The ideal time to begin is three weeks before allergy season is scheduled to start, so keep that in mind. If you'd like additional resources, you can visit this website. And Loveless wants to make sure that members are knowledgeable about preventative screenings, recommendations for specific chronic illnesses, and general prevention activities. Information on this and the next slide is for both preventing health conditions and managing chronic conditions. So please take a moment to read the information. We encourage you to talk to your doctor about the preventative screenings in the left-hand column, as many of them are not one-size-fits-all. The tests for chronic conditions listed are part of a standard of care, but it's always a good idea to discuss discuss these with your doctor as well. This slide continues with more chronic conditions and recommendations if you have these diagnoses. The right-hand column lists other prevention activities we suggest our members participate in to get and stay healthy. If you have questions about this um, or any information, please feel free to email us at healthysteps at loveless.com. And then here are some complimentary resources offered to Loveless Health Plan members. We offer telephone um, counseling for weight management, as well as smoking cessation. We offer health coaching. We have online health tools, um, a great website where you can go to get trusted information. Just follow the login instructions to access these um, resources at www.lovelesshealthplan.com, or you can call us at area code 505-727-5344. Again, that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our next webinar is going to be on work-life balance. It will be on Wednesday, September 26th from um, 12 to 12.30 Mountain Standard Time. See you then.